China on high alert after more than 2,000 local COVID-19 infections were reported. Now that's the highest daily tally since August. Several major cities, including Shanghai and Shenzhen, have ramped up testing and other control measures ahead of a key Communist Party Congress this Sunday. Now the uptick in cases comes on the back of a week-long National Day holiday, with many returning from their domestic trips. Authorities in Shanghai are set to conduct routine testing at least twice a week until November after 28 fresh cases were clocked in the city, the fourth such day of double-digit increases. And in the tech hub of Shenzhen, inbound travellers will have to take three tests over the span of three days. The latest measures come as 3,000 delegates are set together in Beijing for the upcoming Party Congress meeting, during which Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected to secure an unprecedented third term in power. And for more, Lo Minmin, she joins us live now from Beijing. Um, Minmin, these infections climbing to fresh highs not seen in a while. Uh, how exactly are authorities managing the latest outbreaks? Oh, there is a lot of nervousness over potential snap lockdowns that could catch people off guard. A city in, in Shanxi province had imposed a three-day lockdown as a precaution, even though no cases were found there. In Shanghai, public entertainment venues were ordered shut in several districts, and shop owners tell me there are now cameras installed in front of their shops to ensure people scan their health QR codes before entering these shops or restaurants, and that sparked some discomfort over over a breach of privacy, with some wondering whether these cameras would be taken down after the pandemic is over. And an international school said that uh, even though it's not under lockdown, it's told all teachers that they are banned from entering restaurants or public spaces. And clearly there is a sense of heightened alert here in China just days ahead of that key Communist Party Congress when President Xi is seeking a third term in power. And local officials are under tremendous pressure to ensure that there is no major outbreak ahead of that political meeting. In Xinjiang, some tourists who are stranded there were told by uh, officials that they can seek temporary employment as cooks or craftsmen. And while that is a well-intentioned policy, it went viral on social media with some people scoffing at the extreme extent of these measures. And Min Min, as you've mentioned, all of this coming ahead of that crucial Communist Party Congress meeting. Is there any sign that this spate of restrictions could possibly be eased following the meeting? The Communist Party mouthpiece, The People's Daily, has published two articles for two days in a row, calling for China to stick to that dynamic zero COVID strategy, saying that this is the most cost-effective option for China, given its large population and uneven medical resources spread throughout the country. And it says that if, the, if there is a huge rebound of cases, uh, it could hurt the country badly in terms of economic and social development. And the cost of that would be far greater than the cost of sticking to zero COVID. And so th these commentaries have dampened hope that China could ease controls soon after the party congress. State media has so far painted President Xi as that leader who has led the country through a pandemic that resulted in very few deaths. And experts say that President Xi has staked so much political capital on the superiority of the zero COVID strategy that it's hard for him to shift away from that now. But the fact that the P uh, the People's Daily have to publish a commentary calling for patience. Uh, experts say that suggests there is some level of discontent within the party over the zero COVID strategy. And pressure is mounting on the top leaders to indicate when they could lift those measures to stave off a potential recession with the economy projected to grow less than 3% this year, which is far below the official target. Well, many thanks for that report. Lo Min Min reporting to us live from Beijing.